The Great Men That Walked With God From the beginning of time, God has had one core purpose when it comes to you and I, and this is to relate closely with His offspring that are made in His image. This is why when you look through the Bible, there are so many covenants that God put in place between Him and man. He never intended to be far away or distant from this creation that was made in His image. So He told His people often about walking with Him, committing to Him, and holding tightly in a covenant to their God. Even from the very beginning, Enoch, Methuselah, Noah, and Abraham received word about this close walk with the Lord. Enoch, Methuselah, and Noah are characters in the Bible that have intrigued Christians for years. As old as Methuselah, this idiom which has its roots in the Bible could be interpreted to mean that someone or something is quite old. However, it might surprise you that long age was definitely not the only attribute that Methuselah had. A secret fact about Methuselah demonstrates God's grace that most people are unaware of. During his time, there was lavish and intense corruption on the earth. During these times of rapid population growth, there was a problem with ungodly intermarriage between the sons of God and the daughters of men, primarily because of long lifespans in the pre-flood world. Satan sent his angels to marry human women, directly or indirectly. Satan attempted to contaminate mankind's genetic pool with satanic corruption by sowing something resembling a genetic pathogen in order to render the human race unfit to bear the seed of the woman. And Satan came dangerously close to succeeding. Genesis chapter 6 verse 6 states, The Lord was sorry. Other translations use the word repent here. The Hebrew word for sorry or repentance is naham, which also means to be in mourning or to sigh deeply. In English, we use the word remorse. To say that the Lord repented is for God to speak to us in human language so that we can understand His motivations better. The verse seems to imply that the sin of humans grieved God deeply. God is unending love in every way. Because He cares for us and loves us, He does not want anything bad to happen to us. When we sin, it breaks His heart. However, as God, He is incredibly patient and gave them enough warning before taking any action. He was successful in locating the one known as Enoch who was considered to be the first prophet who ever delivered a message from God. Enoch, Methuselah's father, is said to have been a prophet, and Jude wrote down a statement that he had made. Jude, verses 14 and 15. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness, and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. The message was that the judgment day of God was drawing near, and that when it came, God would put an end to any and all forms of irreverence. And Enoch, when he was sixty-five years old, had a kid, a boy, and God gave him a name for the boy, which was to be called, When he dies, it will happen. And the boy was born, and Enoch named him When he dies, it will happen. What a remarkable and unique name for a young man to have. It is essential to keep in mind that his name, When it dies, it will happen, was not in English. Rather, it was written in the Semitic language, are you familiar with what it means in the Semitic language? It is Methuselah. Enoch was aware that when his son passed away, God would judge the world. Because God is so patient, Methuselah lived longer than any other person ever recorded because of this fact. I mean, come on, how incredible is that? 
Methuselah passed away after a lifespan of 969 years. In the day after he did, it began to pour heavily, which marked the beginning of the floods. The name Noah was given to Enoch's great-grandson, who was also Methuselah's grandson. When the patriarch's ages are compared, it is found that the year of the flood was the same year that Methuselah passed away. His example has been followed by countless people throughout several generations, teaching us how to conduct our lives. He imparts this knowledge to us subtly, knowing that if we pursue close communion and fellowship with God with all our hearts, we will have a fresh encounter with God. Enoch's rapture is considered the first event of its kind to be documented. It's possible that the fellowship was so powerful that the presence of God engulfed him and carried him away. The book of Hebrews mentioned men who this world did not deserve. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 5 and 6 By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And Enoch walked with God. The Bible emphasizes that even though he lived a normal human life, he walked with God. This is something we need to keep in mind. With the demise of Methuselah and the recent passing of Lamech, we pause to realize that there were not many righteous people left on the planet. We can see parallels between Enoch's story and the story of Revelation to come. We are called to be righteous and to walk in faith with God in a hostile world. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Now we do not want you to be uninformed, believers, about those who are asleep in death, so that you will not grieve for them as the others do who have no hope beyond this present life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, as in fact he did, even so God in the same way, by raising them from the dead, will bring with him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For we say this to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way precede into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be caught up raptured together, with them the resurrected ones, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort and encourage one another with these words concerning our reunion with believers who have died. The fantastic thing that the Bible still used the time of Enoch, Methuselah, and Noah as a warning for us today. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 46. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched 
and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Even if someone is only mentioned seven times in scripture, in genealogies no less, a little digging can provide some nuggets of truth. God is always looking for faithful and loyal seeds who will live their lives completely for Him. These are the vessels through which He can truly use and manifest His glory. And Enoch walked with God. Despite living his ordinary human life, the Bible emphasizes that he walked with God. We must also remember this. The second man of faith who had the privilege and honor of walking with God was Noah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. But before they carried out God's instructions, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and committed the first sin. From that original sin until the time of Noah, the ninth descendant from Adam via Seth, sin spread on the earth. When the Lord saw that man's wickedness was widespread on the earth, and that every scheme his mind thought of was nothing but evil all the time. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 Scripture records Genesis chapter 6 verses 6 through 9 The Lord regretted that he had made mankind on the earth, and he was deeply grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy, annihilate mankind whom I have created from the surface of the earth, not only man, but the animals and the crawling things and the birds of the air, because it deeply grieves me to see mankind sin, and I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor and grace in the eyes of the Lord. God spoke to Noah when he was 600 years old and said, Understand that I am bringing a deluge floodwaters on the earth to destroy all flesh under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. With the promise, I will establish my covenant with you, Noah, the grandson of Methuselah, and his family were chosen to carry out the command God gave to Adam and Eve. Be fruitful, multiply. Because Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, he was tasked to perpetuate life on earth, and humanity was given a second chance. Although Adam was the father of humankind up to the flood, Noah is the second father of humankind. Noah walked with God, not because he deserved it, but because God extended him unmerited grace. Noah was righteous. He was a righteous man, blameless in his time. He did what was right in God's sight. Noah fellowshiped with God because his walk equaled his talk. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 These are the records of the generations, family history of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, one who is just and had his right standing with God, blameless in his evil generation. Noah walked, lived in habitual fellowship with God. Noah was obedient. Genesis chapter 6 verse 22. So Noah did this according to all that God commanded him. That is what he did. He took God at his word and did everything he said. Noah was a patient man. In fact, Noah constructed the ark while the sun was shining and before the rains began. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 
for you have need of patient endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising so that when you have carried out the will of God you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised Noah was faithful the roll call of the faithful records Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 by faith with confidence in God and his word Noah being warned by God about events not yet seen in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his family by this act of obedience he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which comes by faith scripture says that after Noah had finished building the ark God commanded him to enter the ark Genesis chapter 7 verse 1 then the Lord said to Noah come into the ark you with all your household for you alone I have seen as righteous doing what is right before me in this generation Noah saved himself his family and two of every living creature on the face of the earth from the flood by living a good and holy life Noah would walk with God after the flood because he walked with him before the flood God sent the flood to destroy all wickedness and save the righteous God promised there would not be another earth flood Genesis chapter 9 verse 11 I will establish my covenant with you never again shall all flesh be cut off by the water of a flood nor shall there ever again be a flood to destroy and ruin the earth Genesis chapter 9 verse 7 as for you be fruitful and multiply populate the earth abundantly and multiply in it Noah obeyed God and his descendants the people of the repopulated earth did as they pleased this vicious cycle of grace sin and destruction has been going on for the entirety of human history grace has been extended but sin is widespread Matthew in writing his gospel made a prophecy about our current times Matthew chapter 24 verses 37 to 38 for the coming of the Son of Man the Messiah will be just like the days of Noah for as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the very day when Noah entered the ark will you be surprised by Jesus return despite the Bible's frequent warnings and admonitions are you caught up in the world's business and pleasures expecting and thinking little of Jesus return Abraham received word about this close walk with the Lord Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 and 2 when Abram was 99 years old the Lord appeared to him and said I am God Almighty walk before me faithfully and be blameless then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers these covenants were put in place to build our trust towards God and to assure us of his integrity when it comes to sticking with us he sealed these words in the Old Testament with the blood of spotless lambs often but under the new covenant his promises to us are sealed with the sinless blood of his son Jesus first Peter chapter 1 verses 18 through 21 for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors but with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect he was chosen before the creation of the world but was revealed in these last times for your sake through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him and so your faith and hope are in God and as long as we believe in God we will see how he performs his counsel to those who truly walk with him he guarantees so much to the one who will keep to the terms of his covenant and remains in a love cemented relationship with him 
Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. One of these covenants is a promise to direct and lead those who commit their ways to Him. His relationship with us never takes from us or destroys us, but builds us up and gives us an assurance of all-round rest. Outside the salvation of our souls, divine guidance and revelation are very important in the life of a believer. We can leave our lives to chance by guessing all the way, or we can deliberately walk with God and decide to make His leading an essential part of our lives at all times. Isaiah chapter 42 verses 19 through 25 says, Who is blind but my servant Israel? or deaf like my messenger whom I send? Who is blind like the one who is at peace with me in a covenant relationship, or so blind as the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but you do not observe them. Your ears are open, but no one hears. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness sake to make the law great and prove to be glorious. But this is a people despoiled and plundered. All of them are trapped in holes or are hidden away in prisons. They have become a prey with no one to rescue them and a spoil with no one to say, give them back. Who among you will listen to this? Who will listen and pay attention in the time to come? Who gave up Jacob, the kingdom of Judah for spoil? In the kingdom of Israel to the plunderers. Was it not the Lord, he against whom we of Judah have sinned, and in whose ways they of Israel were unwilling to walk, and whose law and teaching they did not obey? Therefore he poured out on Israel the heat of his anger, and the fierceness of battle, and engulfed him in fire. Yet he did not recognize the lesson of repentance which the Assyrian conquest was intended to teach. It burned him, but he did not take it to heart. From this scripture, we can see that the issue of divine guidance is very important to God, especially for those that have decided to walk with him. Exodus chapter 33 verses 12 through 19. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways, so that I may know you, becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with you recognizing and understanding your ways more clearly, and that I may find grace and favor in your sight. And consider also that this nation is your people. And the Lord said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest by bringing you and the people into the promised land. And Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with me, do not lead us up from here, for how then can it be known that your people and I have found favor in your sight? Is it not by your going with us, so that we are distinguished, your people and I, from all the other people on the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have asked, for you have found favor, loving kindness, mercy in my sight, and I have known you personally by name. Then Moses said, Please, show me your glory. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, for I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show compassion, loving kindness on whom I will show compassion. 
Moses insisted that God must go with him or there won't be any movement. He held his ground and God gave his commitment to lead them. His divine guidance covers every area of our lives. No part is too big or too small. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 13 and 14 says, Be careful that you do not offer your burnt offerings in every cultic place you see, but only in the place which the Lord will choose in one of your tribes. There you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do everything that I am commanding you. This means that because you give doesn't mean it is accepted. When God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, God said he would show Abraham the exact place. Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 to 4 says, Now after these things, God tested the faith and commitment of Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he answered, Here I am. God said, Take now your son, your only son of promise, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he split the wood for the burnt offering. And then he got up and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day of travel, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Walking with God, therefore, means we can't pack our bags and run around with any clear insight into what God has planned for us or where he wants us to be at different times. A man that takes walking with God seriously will always want to inquire from God before taking any step. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10 says, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in a place of their own and not be disturbed again. The wicked will not afflict them again as formerly. This is why communicating with God can't be neglected. Even when God finally shows us the place, it is important that we learn to stay put till he speaks to direct otherwise. Another aspect of God's divine guidance is where we are taught and fed on his word. This is why he said the following words in Jeremiah chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. God says this because He truly cares for us and He wants us to be the best that we can be. Therefore, don't be wise in your own eyes as the Bible warns in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-7. through 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Another huge part of our walk with God is the heart that makes him a priority and a determination to serve him or his purposes, not self. Our lives should represent a seed in advancing the kingdom as a covenant to God. Many people may reduce kingdom stewardship to a task only for ordained ministers. But the one who walks with God in truth never forgets that we are all ambassadors of Christ on the earth and that our job is to be faithful stewards of the king and kingdom that we represent. Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 through 34. Therefore do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, What are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry, 
for your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after His kingdom and His righteousness, His way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus was saying that if we seek the kingdom, God will bring our other heart's desires and everything else that will make life meaningful. When we make our lives a seed unto God, it will even have a huge impact on the generation after us, our children, and their children also, because God never breaks His covenant to those who walk with Him. Psalms chapter 112 verses 1 to 3 says, Praise the Lord, hallelujah, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God, is the man who fears the Lord with awe-inspired reverence and worships Him with obedience, who delights greatly in His commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in His house and his righteousness endures forever. Therefore, it is time to actively walk with God, with a heart to be a real part of the kingdom work that his army on earth is involved in. Let us pray. Father, I am ready to walk with you in a way that I have never done. Thank you for your desire to walk with me and give your leadership on every subject I ask in the name of Jesus for a heart that is selfless and joyous as I walk with you daily. Amen.